Ruchim Aboim B'Shem Hashem B'Shem Egin Shir Tehr Like to welcome everyone to today's Shir from Rav Yaakov Zav Smith and Isra Yitzor B'Shabbos B'Dvarim She'ena Malbush Jewelry and non-clothing items on Shabbos Tav Zgetsos is sponsoring a Shir called Egin Shir Tehr 718-851-8651 or email ist at yeshivanet.com Rav Smith as the world changes, so halacha has to be responsive. We, you know, the, we have today a number of hoitzah shilas that are very much negay, especially for the summer months. For example, the, the important question of wearing a reflector when someone goes out in a suburban area, you're allowed to wear a reflector, which is presumably not a beged. The other questions that we have more recently, you think that style comes back, people starting to wear feathers in their hats with pins. Is that a problem of hoitzah? A little handkerchief that people put on the, the jacket in the upper pocket. Is that an issue of Aitzah? And again, we'll see there is, is a question of a catheter when people are not well. And there are many different styles in a variety of, of scenarios. But basically, the question is when is something that a person might be wearing and he needs it, when is it considered carrying? So, as our derech says, we have to try to clarify one yisoid. And here I'm going to step back and ask a very simple question. Very, very simple. A beggar is definitely mutter to wear on Shabbos. That everybody agrees. But what's the understanding? Why should a beggar be mutter to wear on Shabbos? Now, the fact that you're wearing it, quote unquote, in itself is not a heta. Because we know the famous Gemara Masech to Shabbos, Hayoyitz of Talas Mekupeles. Someone goes out with a talis that's not worn, kederech malbusha. He, let's say, typically some people put it on the shoulder before davening, and they, you know, schmooze a few minutes as, like, as if that's part of the mitzvah, the folded talis on the shoulder. But that, if someone goes on, on Shabbos with that talis mekupeles, he's chayiv chat, as the Gemara says. Any time that he wears a talis, and if it's not derech malbusha, he, it's over. So you see, even wearing something, avad is also. So now the question is, so why is a beged mutter? So the terrorist really, as I said, is simple, minei hubei. Because a beged that's derech malbush, that, as the Rambam says in Perik Yud Ches, Allah Yud Zayin, he says that, that something that, he's talking about it's a carrying a person, but the point is very important for us. The malbush that's on him is tof aloi, tfeil aloi. Now the Rambam is saying that beged in itself is not the heta. It has to be a beged that is worn derech malbushay, and then we could say that it's bottled to the person. You know, the saber sa'oiz, and I don't bring a raya from this, but you know, you say you came home from work, you came home with your, your briefcase. Okay, that makes sense. But you don't say, I came home from work with my shirt and my jacket. Because the shirt and the jacket is part of you. And that's why the Rambam explains the same halacha, but let's say the kalim are, are folded, then he's chayif. Why is he chayif? Ah, he's wearing the beged. So the key factor is malbush derech levushay. Fine. That's why when the talis that we wear by davening, even though it is folded up, but it's derech malbush. Fine. Yeah. Now the next question. Okay, malbush, I understand. But what's the heter to wear a tachshit? Jewelry for women, it's, it's nice, but who said this mutter go out on Shabbos? But it can't be that it's also because of the Therish and Mishnah in Shabbos, Samach Gimel. Interesting Mishnah about a person going out with his weapons, a sayif, especially he's wearing it in the, on, on his side. So it's machleik is tanoim if you allowed to go out with, with, with the weapons. The, the, the sheet that's mekel holds, it's tachshir hulay. Rabbi Leza says it's a tachshit. Chacham say no, it's not a tachshit because war and fighting is not the ideal situation. Baraya, when Mashiach comes, we're not going to have war. But all agree that a tachshit, had, it, had a, a sword been a tachshit, it's vade muta. Actually, there are other Mishnayis regarding rings, nose rings, earring they wore. But what's the pshat? Okay, we know it's muta. Why is it a muta? So there are chashochen and shin alef mem ches. He says, "Begodem amot avadi." A person has to get dressed. And tachshit, you can't call it a masui because it's tachshit. But he didn't answer, like saying, "Why?" Because it's not an answer. So the answer is very posh. The same thing that lemaisa a tachshit, since people wear it, and he's wearing it to derech of a tachshit, it becomes bottle. Now, a beggar is a better heter because people need begotten more than tachshitim. 
But that's irrelevant. As long as it becomes bottle and part of the person, it would be mutter. So we have begodim and we have tachshit. Now let's move on. And now we come to the third category, and that's a teisefta. Teisefta is in Shabbos, Vav, Simon Gimel, talking about a wound covering. I guess the best marshal today is a band-aid. Why is it mutter to wear a band-aid on Shabbos? It's not a tachshit, it's not a malbush. So the teisefta holds, it's clearly mutter, and that's kepaskin in Shulchan Aruch. But what's noteworthy in the tour, Shin Aleph, and it's in the new print, it's next to Ois Chavbeis, You'll have to go out, let's say, with a band-aid. Why? Habi kemoi tach tachshit. A band-aid is like a tachshit. Now, that, that sounds strange. A band-aid is not a tachshit. A band-aid is a cheap piece of plastic. Evidently, the Torah is saying a beautiful yesoid. Why is a tachshit mutter? Because it becomes part of you. A tzorich haguf, or the way the place can refer to it as l'itzule, Tsar, it's protecting you from tsar, is also a tsar chaguf. And I would add, what's more important, protect you from pain or, or tachshit? Tachshit you can live without. But protect your body is more of a tsar. So the Torah seems to say, you know why the Tesefta allows a tzule tsar? Because it's bottled to the guf. And what's noteworthy, the Rav Shechonarch and Sifiot and Mr. Bursi of Katan and Aleph speak about an Ishanid that's having a heavy flow of dam. And she'll have to go out with something to cover, to, to protect from the, from the dam, causing her, her tsar. And the Rav and the Mishtabura say, you know why that beggar is mutter? Because it's a malbush gomor. Now, it's not a malbush gomor. But the, the beauty of the sugya is, we have three cases, and they're all mutter for the same reason. A malbush is bottled to the guf. A tachshit is bottled to the guf. Tzoyr chaguf. Either you'll call it a malbush, like the Rav does, or you'll call it a tachshit. But at the end of the day, it's, the heta is whatever is bottled to the guf. Now, this is why you have to be careful. Because mitzad echad, we know, if it's not bottled to the guf, it's chayiv chattas. Talos mekupel is chayiv chattas. If it's mutter, it's mutter gomer. And taken the machab in shin alaf siv zayin, he says, if you do it right, it's mutter. You wear the bag it right, it's mutter. If not, chayiv. And chayiv means chayiv chatas, which is very scary. Now, to apply this lemaisa, let me present the shayla. Let's say in shul someone comes over to you, and I'm talking when I say going out, I mean where there's no Arab. A person comes over to the shul and he says, I I'm stuck, I was in the mikvah, my socks fell into the mikvah, I need socks. And you live close by, could you mind going home, putting on an extra pair of socks and bringing it to me? So now you're wearing malbush, Derech Malbush, but it's an extra one. So this is a Gemara in Shabbat, actually a Mishnah, in two places. You're allowed to wear as many Begadim as you want. If there's a fire raging, you're allowed to say Begadim, I'm wearing on top of the other. Why is it Mutter? You're wearing it just to bring it for your friend. Ah, the Teretz is, once it's a Malbush and it's Derech Malbush, there's no limit. In fact, you're allowed to wear a Beged that only uh, Royim, only those that work in the fields wear. That's called Begad Royim. That's the Ferish Gemara. I am out of pasture. Why is it mutter for me? Territ is once it's a malbush, the heta is fine. The only thing is if it's not Derek Malbush. But a malbush or two is okay. Okay. Now let me ask you the next question. Someone comes over to Inshul, same fellow next week. I got a pretty deep cut. I, 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 there's no band aid in the shoe. Would you mind going home? putting on a band-aid, bringing it, and giving it to me. This is the post-COVID, we're not worried about germs. But he's going to take your you band-aid from your hand to his hand. Can you go home and bring a band-aid just for him? Doesn't sound right, but why? And it's not going to be right, why? Because the head of a band-aid is tzayrach. And you have no tzayrach. If you, if you have no cut, why are you wearing it? What, do you have a migui? Migui is good for, for you know, chayshem but But a, a tzayrach, that's not a tzayrach, is a joke. Okay, good. Question number three, and then we're going to use this, this little of, of analogy. Question number three, and Isha comes over to a friend there in Shul. I can't believe it. I came to Shul. I'm not wearing a necklace. I feel like uh, I got to go home. I'm, uh, unless you do me a favor, go home, wear your necklace, and give it to me. Can an Isha wear a necklace just to bring it for someone else? The answer is, why not? Because the Isha is walking. Uh, for her, it's a tachshit. You know, maybe two necklaces. You have to know if that's the derech, but no shayla. Okay. Last shayla. Let's say, this is a little interesting, 
The wife forgot to bring a necklace, but she's uncomfortable to ask a chavata. So she calls her husband in the, in the men's section, quick, quick, emergency, you go home and wear a necklace and bring it to shul. So besides the issue of, of course, la yilbash, this is a, believe it or not, beferish yikimar in Shabbos Samach Beis. And the paskin the Shulchan Aruch Shin Gimel Yudches. That a tachshit, for a man's tachshit, for a woman, or vice versa, is also. You know why? Bashit, it's not a tachshit. It looks very strange, walking into shul with a necklace. So the point is, we see four different cases, the contrast to Yisoyed, but it has to be a malbish, or a tachshit, or a tzorich haguf, that's functional. No monkey business. If it's wrong, it's chayiv chatos. Okay, now we'll apply it a little more specifically. Uh, today, um, there's a lot of uh, dental care that people take. We have it in the shiv all the time. They have bite places, bite plates, or they have removable braces, orthodontic braces. All of them with all the different forms. Basically, it's not the old-fashioned braces that they're, they're attached to your mouth. You can't take them out. These go in and go out. And the question is, can you wear it outside? So the embassy is not a malbush. It's not a tachshit. But this is basically a tzar chaguf, the tzar. And that's why the paiskim say, you will have to wear it as long as no real chashat will take it out because it's too uncomfortable. I saw a foreshaim in a safe in Arach Yaakov, Chaylik Al Simon Samach Beis, has an interesting shayla where someone was in an accident and he's, he has a lot of pain in his mouth. The doctor has a certain, something he puts in his mouth that somehow, it doesn't explain how, but somehow alleviates the pain. Can he go out and shop with something in his mouth to alleviate the pain? So his basic cheshbin is, this is a tzul eitzar. Now, if there's a cheshash, will take it out and carry it, then you have to be worried. But he says the thing is so expensive, you don't take it out of your mouth. If you take it out, you have to put it in a special case, which he's not carrying. So there's no cheshash taking it out. It's basically a tzul eitzar, and it's our gemar. Uh, people have orthodontic... Um, not the, the orthopedic, I'm sorry, insoles in their shoes, or they have pads uh, uh, for flat feet, whatever it is, treatment for the, for the shoes or for the feet. So I saw the Dinim and Hagas al-Chazanish, Yudal Yud, he speaks about flat fuss, which is flat feet. He's allowed to put in a insole, because that's a tzul eitzar. Even though you're not attaching it to the shoe, but you're allowed to put it in. Now, he says it's got a better, Mr. Bruce says to put it in before Shabbos. This way it becomes both little, the shoe before Shabbos. The Chazanish in the next sieve says that people, some of the person buys a hat and it's not a good fit. So he wants to put in a little cardboard or paper in the, in, in the inside of the hat, in the, in the lining of the hat, and then it's a little tighter fit. He says, same hat. It becomes bottle to the beged because it's a tzayrich of the beged or the person. Now, this basically is the tzayrich of the guf. Now, lately we hear interesting shilas, each, each for their own, I should say. And that, let's say, wearing a, a bobby pin, a rubber band. For example, people, bobby pin on the yarmulke, young children that the yarmulke falls off, so the parents put a bobby pin on the yarmulke, and they want to keep the payas, the crowds of the payas in place, they wear a bobby pin. Uh, people have a long beard, they roll it up, they use a rubber band or a bobby pin. So each, in his own situation, have these shilas. So, a bobby pin is not a tachshit, sich not a malbush. The question is, so, is there any heta to use it because you have a tzoyrech? So, if you learn shuchanach superficially, you found it in Sif ches, shin al sif ches. La yeitzi b'mechet, tatchuvalei b'vigdoi. And the only question is, there's a pin that has a hole in the top, like a sewing needle, or a regular needle. But the Mechabah says both are also. The question is, that which is the Raisa, which is the Rabbanan? Zok de Mishtabura, Sif Katan Ambeiz, why is a, a pin or a needle also? Because a Mechet is not a Tachshit. Oh, so we see a pin is also. So why do we see people wearing Bari pins? So the Chilik is very Pashit. If you look at the Mishtabura, it's Pashit. The reason why it's also to wear a pin is because you want to transport it. You want to bring it from place A to B. But you're not allowed to carry on Shabbos. So you stick it into your hair or, or baguette, thinking, oh, now it's part of me. But it's not functional. If it's not functional, it can't become part of you. But today, that people, the Muslim, wear a, a safety pin to keep the yarmulke in place or, or to keep the beard rolled up, why isn't that a functional item that you need for your going out? 
And the embassy says that Taka, we find such a thing, that Lamashla belt is not a malbush, it's not a tachshit, but it's bottled to the beged. It becomes an accessory to the beged. Now, since the whole heta that we said of malbush, tachshit, is bottle accessory, a belt is mut, it's part of the, the become bottle of the pants. So why can't we say that a pin that a person needs, he's not doing it to carry it, he's doing it to go out. You know, some people have a long beard, then pour them, they walk at the shul, and you don't recognize them. <laughs> because that's the way, that, that's their, their way, the way they get, they, they will go a whole year. So that's the way he keeps his um, identity. Rav Moshe was asked in Chelek Aleph Kuv Zayin about a collar stiffener, a little piece of plastic that people put in their collar to keep it stiff. So again, a little piece of plastic is not a malbush, and not a tachshit. So he says, and he points to a similar halacha in Shulchan Aruch, you look it up, that something that is a tzorich of the malbush, that helps you wear the malbush properly, is okay. Now, this is not his exact marshal. Mechabah's marshal is talking about what women wear, but today, I think you could understand that because men wear it, those that wear vice or sokin, so you have like a little of a belt to tie, to connect the pants with the socks. So why is that muta? It's not a malbush, not a tachshit, but that's considered a tzayrich malbush. The Mishtebura in Shin Aleph, Kuf, Memtes, mentioned the same het. And the truth is, it's so easy to understand once we use that key word that we began with, a bottle, of accessory. A malbush, a tachshit, a tzulei guf, is muta because it's bottle. No? So isn't it logical that, a, that you need a little strap to keep your pants and, and your socks together? That's also a bottle. And that's why a kala stiffen is mutter. And that's why it makes sense that as long as you're wearing the pin or the bobby pin for a tzorich that you need, that's not just to transport it, it should be mutter. And the Mishtabura says this in Shin Gimel, Sif Kotn Chav Dalid, where women use the pin to keep the tichel, their kerchief, closed. L'may mit kishureha. Zok the Mishtabura, why is that pin mutter? I thought a pin is asa. It's Mishtabura, it's pasha. If you're wearing the pin to transport it from place to place, that's a tzor. If you're wearing it to keep the tichel closed, that's a tzorich of the malbush. And Rav Moshe in Yeridei, Chelek Aleph, Memches, that's the famous truth about Chol of Yisrael, but punct at the end, he has a few lines, and he says, a mechet, that's not a tachshit, but women put it in the hair to keep their hair together, is mutter to wear on Shabbos, because you're not doing it to carry. Now, Lemaisa, the that's why we'll see the Paiskim or Mekel, a pin that you need, a bobby pin that you need. But before we apply this, I want to just make a point. The Machab and Shin Gimel Yud Ches, speaking about pins that are Tachshitim, which is Mutter, make it a din. He says, but be careful, because some of the pe people have pins from yesterday in their hair, and they're not even using it. it they, they, it's not even noticeable. But once it's there, they go out. He goes, that's wrong. It's only mutta if each pin is needed. Now, why do I stress this? Because daik v'tishka, people, let's say, uh, on the yarmulke, they have a, th uh, a, 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 a bobby pin. Let's say they have two of them. So sometimes, after a while, the bobby pin is not even attaching to the hair. But once it's there, they keep it. They have a bobby pin on the left side, it's good enough. So they're going out with a bobby pin on that, and one side attaching to the hair, and one side not. So that's taka b'fer shemachaba and shin gimel yud ches. That if it's not functional and it's not a tachshit, not a malbush, so what is it? So when we're talking about in any case rubber bands, bobby pins, safety pins, whatever it is, it's if it's functional, we have the heta of bittel. Now lemaisa the puparav and the chuvas ayan yosef simon kuf chav zayin. He was asked about a rubber band that people put in the beard to after they roll it up to keep it up. So he says, this the shoyal held, it's also because the Mechaba says that a pin is also. Zok te puparav, it's not a good dimyan. A pin in those days was worn to transport. But the rubber band is a tzayre chaguf. But then after, he proves in other place, he says, he quotes the Gemara, and this you see the year of Shemayim. Because I think it's mutter. Is it mutter? Who said a rubber band in a beard has become a acceptable tzorich? In other words, if one or two people do it, does it make it mutter? So he says, if you ask me, we say, but it's better to avoid using a rubber band in your beard. 
the Ksari says, Shochan and Kuf Memvava Aruch Hafav, and the way he says it, I hear people started putting a, a, a hard noddle, a pin into their beard, like it's a new thing. I'm not sure it's mutter. The Be'er Moisha in Chelik Da'al Lama Gimel speaks about both rubber bands and pins, safety pins. And he says, that's Lahatzel Atzmai Mitzar. He wants to look, the beard rolled up. He doesn't want to all of a sudden come into shul. I think it's Purim. So he says, both rubber band and a pin is mutter. Now it's not necessarily Machloikis. Because the Puparav wrote the tshuva many years before the Debetzina Rav wrote the tshuva, and certainly the Ksayis HaShulchan. And the Shulchan writes, it was a Chiddush that people put rubber bands in their beard. Today, the Metzius says people do it. People, rubber bands, women, girls wear it on their hair. So I saw the Nishma Shabbos, Kufal Amabes also points out, it brings other points that it's from that I don't have. But at the end of the day, we're comfortable to say that a, a, a rubber band or a, a, a safety pin, or a, I'm sorry, a, a, a bobby pin, in the beard, that's the derech. If it's the derech, it's bottled. If it's functional, if it's being used. Now, the Oz Nidbur Chaylik Beis, Mem Hey, it's interesting, this reminds me when I was a child, this was the, the, the thing to talk about. He says, people wear a Kazayis Kapala, they call it the small tiny yarmulke, and they have the bobby pin, so it's not right. And by the way, he's a mutter on Shabbos, the Esther Oz Nidbur. So he ignores the, you know, the, whether it's a, you know, nice or not, modern or not. He says, a few words. Minyan saw what keeps the kapal, the keeper in place, Tzarech Mal and Muta. So basically, the bobby pin is definitely a Tzarech of the Malbush, and it's okay. Now, safety pins, of course, the question if you let it use safety pin on Shabbos, let's say the hem of the pants fell down. So you do it to Machloik, if you let it use a safety pin on Shabbos, or Moshe El Muta. But let's talk about he did, he put in the safety pin before Shabbos. Is he allowed to go out? to a place with no air with a safety pin holding up the, the hem of his pants. So again, it's enough of a tzayuch malbush. And Taka, I saw the tzayuch shulchan. In Kuf Mem Vav, the end of Sif Kotan Chav Beis, first speaks about a shpilka. A shpilka is a regular pin. And he discusses if that's the derech. And, but then he says, but safety pins I heard, that's the derech to wear. And therefore it's mutter. And this in Karel, it's, in Chutshani Chalik Dal Amud Kuv Chabei says Sichas Bitocha in safety pin and a Bobby pin Sicha Regila are both Mutter on Shabbos. Now I just want to make a point: the Shmir Shabbos in Yud Ches Sif Chav, it's also sorry Sif Beis I should say. It's interesting people do this sometimes during the week. People go out with a rubber band on their wrist. <laughs> Maybe they have it there, they use it, they're working people, whatever it is. So he says, on Shabbos you can't go out with a rubber band. Because it's not a tachshit, it's not a malb, it's not a tzarech it's not keeping your hand in place. It's not a gzeres a rubber band is muta. Rubber band and a beard and a hair is okay. Okay. Now reflector, we once spoke about it, but I want to just make one more point, because it's negeya. Reflectors that are worn in areas, suburban areas are very much needed. You know, it's dark and there's no visibility, whether it's mountains, Muncie, Lakewood, etc., etc. So we once discussed probably there are close to four or five makaris from Shas and, and, and Shulchan Aruch that something that protects a person that he wears it is muta on Shabbos lechatchila. Now, especially if some people wear the the reflector as a belt. Now, some people during the winter they take out the co coat belt and they wear the reflector. That's vade mutter lecholadeis. But even without that, during the summer, we're not wearing a coat. But if it's a the matzel, the guf, the tsar from tsar, son of the terrible accident. So all the poskim agree that's mutter. It's worn and it's worn regularly. Now I saw a kalkar of all the lake with bottom that signed in it, then Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky and and some um, Miller sign. But just, I guess, since I said this last, I saw the Machzal Yo and Chelik Bey, Sim and Yud, has a very thorough tshuva while proving that it's mutter. So if you want to see it, Lahagatar Adira, fine. But one thing, please wear the reflector. Especially the summer's coming, people go to areas that are extremely dark. There's no visibility by cars. So Avadar is be mutter, al Atzulei Tsar from Rahman al terrible tragedy. Kain Lechachem Yechkem, just a point to think about. Those that wear a tie, okay? What is the reason for, what is the function of a tie? Is it a malbush or is it a tachshit? Now think about this, it's a big nafkamina. Lamaisa, you're wearing it, 
But then again, you're not wearing it to keep you warm like a scarf. Is it a tachshit? Is it a malbush? It's not really like a scarf, because again, it's really weird to adorn a person. So, someone told me a piece of history, I think he knows what he's talking about, that originally they didn't have ties. Originally it was a bow tie. Now the bow tie name is very indicative of the purpose. You know what the reason a bow tie was? Not to look fancy. But you don't want to have a button on the top of the shirt because that would be choking you. You wanted to close it in a way that it's pre presentable but not too tight. So they had a bow tie that you close the collar, but collar without using a button. So it was simple, a tzoyrech malbush. But, you know, the world, you know, has to become fancier. So you had a fancy bow tie. Now, once you had a fancy bow tie, so a tie is a, is a better option. <laughs> so that means that it's choice three. It's a tzoyrech malbush. So what is the identity of a tie? So Rav Moshe, in a very famous tshuva, Chelek Beis, I involved, and the same thing in Chelek Gimel Memvav, where Moshe Shita was that you can't walk out when there's no place with no Erev wearing a garotel. Because even though a garotel is important for davening, but it's not a malbush and not a tachshit. Okay, see them wear a garotel on Shabbos outside because it is a malbush of Shabbos. But the Moshe Shita was, it's none of the above. And Moshe added, ah, you're going to put the garotel on the tie and make it into a, a sort of a tzorich malbush. So Dr. Moshe, a tie is not a malbush. And you can't have a gachagura on a tie. Rabbi Moshe says it's twice the same Russian. A tie is not a malbush. A tie is a tachshit. And you can't have a gartel, a holy tachshit, on a tachshit. Okay. Then I saw the chutzani. This is the Kareel. He says, Aniva, a tie, zeu derech malbush. And it's not a tachshit. So even though, he says, you might have a top button closed, so you don't need the tie, but it's still a malbush. So here we see two ways of looking at it. And again, the nafkamina is the, this question about wearing a gartel over the tie. We'll soon see another nafkamina. Now, the, you know, I heard one of my rabbeim said they once asked the chazinish, what, what, what's more important, covered Shabbos or oinik Shabbos? And the chazinish had ruach hakodesh and chap what the development they asked. This was an American person came there to Israel, and he was wearing a tie by this, by, you know, for Shabbos. But it's very hot in Bnei Brak, especially when those before air conditioning. So he wanted to know, should he take off the tie? Mitzar Echod, Oynik Shabbos, is to feel comfortable. But then again, wearing a tie is covered Shabbos. So he asked the Chazanish in a, in a like, disguised way, what's more important, covered or Oynik? Chazanish says, I know what you mean. So, 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 so it's not a, a covered, it's not an Oynik, it's none of the above. Taka, so for those that hold that the tie is none of the above, don't wear a tie. But for those that wear a tie, we have to figure out, and we'll soon see a little more about this, what is the identity of a tie? <laughs> Another point that's Mamish our sugya, and I, I, you know, I told my my the, the Bochum the Yeshiva, I said, you know, believe it or not, there was a time that you only opened the door if you had a key. You know, people say, what's a key? You know, remember when we grew up, we had keys, you had to open doors. Today, there's, uh, you know, sh Shabbos combination locks, and, and, and there's digital, you know, all these different, uh, you know, codes. But one of the greatest struggles for a Baal HaLocha in, on Shabbos was how do we carry, or beheta, how do we transport a key on Shabbos? People lived in apartment building, had two or three keys. So the truth is this, was, this could be a share for itself. But to make a long story short, because today it's almost irrelevant, that the, the best way in our Pialocha would be to get a belt, take out the tongue of the belt, and put instead a key in its place. So then, although it's a regular key, it is fully functional as a tzorich of the begot. Now that's a wonderful eitzah. The problem is if you had uh, more than one key, or if you're a woman doesn't wear a belt, or if you don't wear, a man doesn't wear a belt, what do you do about getting, transporting the key? So the second eitzah would be, that some men did, they made in the key into a tie pin. Now, that had a problem. If you don't wear a tie, you don't need a tie pin. Also, if you, if you the place can clear, well, what's the heta? If you learn a tie is a, ta is, is a tachshit, and this tie pin is not a tachshit at all. So some made fancy tie pins, fine. But again, the tie pin was not a perfect eitzah. The third eitzah that was more user-friendly, that women used, was a, what's called a, a Shabbos key. 
basically it took a regular key and some of them plated it silver, some of them put on ornaments on it. So they made the key into a tachshit. Oh, that was a booming business, Shabbos keys, and everybody lived happily ever after. But the truth is, everybody knows you're wearing a Shabbos key to carry it. But right, you don't go to a chasen wearing a Shabbos key. Now maybe the belt, the belt is a belt. And taki, you look in Shulchan Aruch, and that's why it's a whole shir. Shin alef yud alef, mafteicha is no ishel kesef. This, they did something like we did. A nice key of kesef. Some say, you're carrying it. It's a marasayin. V'yesh matir mushal kesef. And the Ramah adds, if you have a key shon the choyshes, and you attach it to the belt, it's also for the same reason, because people know why you're doing it. V'yesh akos v'shanagu b'zeheta. And the Ramah concludes, the minig is to be mekel. So that's why the truth is that Paiskim say the minig of the Shabbos keys or the Shabbos belts was really a beferish machaba in Shin Aleph Yud Aleph. Now Rav Moshe asked a question in Chei Lekei Simon Yud Ches that really needs an answer. Good. Let's say it's clear you're wearing a Shabbos key to carry it. But the, the same Gemara and Shulchan Aruch says you're allowed to wear two pair of socks to bring it for the fellow that needs the pair of socks. So even though Haraya, Haraya knows why you're doing it, why is it also to wear, like some sheets to wear a Shabbos key, but two pair of socks is muta? But I think could be the teretz is, like we said earlier, lemaisa, a beged is a bigger head than a tachshit. A beged, every, per, every single person needs. Tachshit is as optional. So maybe taka the yisoid would be, a beged is muta, even, even though it's obvious why you're wearing it. But a tachshit has to only be muta if it is not a question of Marisai. But again, the Mechaba and their Moa make a and that's why the Minig was to wear these type of devices. The Shevet Alevi in Chelek Tes, Simon Samachay, was asked about a person that has problems. He has to go out, push the with a catheter that otherwise he can't go to Shul. So Rav Ozna was not too supportive of this idea. A catheter that's really a, a bag that's, that keeps the Tsoyu or the Meir Aglayim is not a bag or Malbish. But most Paiskim hold its mutter. Rabbi Shlaim Zalman and the Shmir HaShabbos and Shulchan Shlaim, Rafua Beis Kuv Membov, the Chut HaShoni, Tzitzel all say, this is a real McCoy, let's sue later. The infection that could come out, I mean, the problem that a person could have if he doesn't wear the catheter would be enough to make it a, a tzu later. So here you have a Gemara that applies to, in a today's situation, in a very profound way. Now, part two is Jewelry Lemaisa. Now, Lemaisa, as I told you, there are at least three Makairas in Shas that a person's allowed to wear jewelry on Shabbos. Yet the next words of the Machaba is quoting a different Gemara. After the Machaba is allowed to wear jewelry on Shabbos, but the Machaba quotes a Gemara in Shabbos Nun Tes, but Lemaisa, even though it's a Tachshit, but Dilma Shofla Umachvile Vaasil Asuye. This is what's called Gezeris Tachshitin. To make a long story short, people, as we'll soon see, this is a key factor, people did not go out as often as the women go out today. The Ramah said they went out once a month. Called Kfud Bas Melech Panima. The Yerach HaShulchan says they didn't have shuls, but they can see us for women. But at the end of the day, women did not go out that often. If they went out, they went out on Shabbos. If they went out, they went out wearing their ornaments, their jewelry, because they're very proud of it. So here's the concern that an Isha might meet a friend in the street, show, take off a jewelry to show it, which is not a problem. Take it off and put it back is not a problem. But absent mind, they're going to go and continue carrying without putting it back. And then you're carrying jewelry, which is no to whatsoever. In other words, it's basically a chashash you might come to carry. And you'll say, what? It's only carrying absent mindedly. But how, don't, do you remember we lost three mitzvahs yikarais because of this very chashash? We don't take lulav on Shabbos. We don't take blow shayf on Shabbos. Eretz Yisrael, they don't, listen, they don't have Megillah on Shabbos because you might run to a rav to ask him a shayla. Now, he's only doing it absentmindedly. The teretz is chazal was shayim a Shabbos. Shmir a Shabbos. You know, you know, there are more in Shin Aleph Tezai and records the minig that a person should not go on Shabbos without a special begging of Yochel the Shabbos. To remind them constantly that it's Shabbos. You know, so, so, and the truth is, 
This is the real Shmira Shabbos. Uh, there are many halachas about, you might come to carry, a, a very loose slipper cannot be worn. We don't wear gloves on Shabbos, you might take it off. Something that people will laugh at you, you don't, you don't wear it, you might come to carry it. But at the end of the day, the Mechaba in Shin Aleph Zion, after he says you're allowed to wear Tachshitim, but an Isha should not go out with Tachshitim, because she might come to carry it. And this is in Shin Aleph Zion, Shin Gimel Beis, Dalit, Ches, and Yud. And primarily in Yud Ches. But listen to see if Yud Ches. The Shulchan Aruch quotes opinions, when is it Asa, Xeris Tachshitim, to wear Tachshitim on Shabbos? So the first Shita is, is also even in a Carmelist, that's an also Issa de Rabbana. Okay. The Yesh Oimim? No. It's so much of a Chashash that even in a Chatzim Urevis, even in a, in a closed backyard, or in one's private house, this is a Shulchan Aruch, in Sif Yud Ches, even in your private house, you're not allowed to wear jewelry. Because you might go out and end up showing off and end up carrying. Baruch Hashem, there's a third Yesh Oimim. No, in a Chatzah Mureves, in an area you're allowed to, but outside of the area you're not allowed to. And the emphasis, believe it or not, in, in, there was a time in history that women did not wear jewelry. It's a Gemara and it's a Mechaba. And pardon me for the marshal, but Shabbos looked like Tishabav. <laughs> now Tishabav women don't wear jewelry, but the rest of the week they do. And Kum Shabbos, no jewelry. But Poik Chazi, Mayama Debar, Nashim Chashubas wear jewelry. What's the Pshat? And many husbands never heard of this. So the Shulchan Aruch continues. After he says that the Issa of Tachzeret Tachshitim based on Gemara, Vo'edna Neshei Didan do wear jewelry. You know what the reason is? Mutav she yishoygin va'yim azidois. Which is not a very flattering statement to make. In other words, women will not listen to you anyhow, so cut your losses. That's very hard to understand. Nashim Tidkani is, you know, they're usually a step ahead of us, you know, like you and your Shulchan Aruch, I, I don't believe in you and your Shulchan Aruch. Here, they don't, they, they end up carrying, chas v'sho. The second het that the Shulchan Aruch brings is that really today there's no real Shram der Aysa. So only Chashas der and you can be Mekel. And that's where the Mechaba ends. And that's why for, for Mechaba Shita, jewelry today is basically still also. However, the Ramah adds another tam. And that is since today we are more wealthy, more well-to-do than our previous generations, and we have a lot of jewelry, and we wear them weekday and Shabbos, so there's no natia to show it off. And again, those days they barely had what to live. They had a little bit of jewelry, they saved for Shabbos. Oh, Shabbos is the time to, to, I guess, to, you know, Baroisei syndrome, you have to show off. That's a problem. But today we wear jewelry during the week and no one's showing it off. Now, the Urayim in Simon Reish, I endowed one of the Rishayim, he adds, because the same Gemara that says women cannot wear jewelry, but Isha Chashuva could, because she's above it. She doesn't show it off. So you see that when someone's not showing it off, it's not my Chiddush, your Chiddush, it's a Gemara. So Zok the Urayim, and this you could quote at home, Nishay Didan, they're all Nashim Chashuvas. In this respect, I'll come on that they don't show off. The Archa Shulchan in Shin Aleph Chavbeiz, he says today, he says it, it's a Heta Nochen in Bora, and Imamish explains the details. And in, in today, women go out the whole week, and they go out on Shabbos, and they don't show it off. In those days, they went out very rarely. They had no shul that they congregated in. They came, they finally met someone, and they were very proud of it. But he says today, the, the Chashash no longer exists. Now, Lamaisa, we could add, on a practical level, if we are going to be Machmer, Shabbos is going to be Tishabav. You know, the one time, the two times women don't wear Tishabav, the one with um, Tachshitin is Tishabav and Shabbos. But Lamaisa, the Gro, in Maisa Rav, Simon Kuf Memalef, he says, an Isha, if you know she'll be Makabu, your words, tell her not to wear jewelry. The Rav Shachanar and Chav Gimel, the Kitzah, Peidal, the Beis, also say, if the Isha will listen, then Taka should not wear jewelry. But Lamaisa, it's interesting, because the reason that the Shulchan Aruch is Mekel is Mutav Shi Now that's not the first time we, we hear that. If you remember the Gemara, and Machaba quotes this, Marzim Beya, that women for some reason ate after this Man on Yom Kippur. But don't tell them to stop, because they're not going to listen Mutav Shi 
And there we see today, Baruch Hashem, they're better than, than we are. So why don't we change this about carrying? It seems, and the, that's the way the Chazanish is quoted in Archas Rabbeinu and Aleph Kuvla Medzayin, that he told the stipula that Lemaisa we paskin like the Ramah, that today there's no Issa jewelry period. Lechatchila, it's mutter wear jewelry. Now, I, I told someone, you want to be from? I have a very good idea for you. Don't talk Lashon Hara, add more learning time, be nice to your wife, but impose on your wife not to wear jewelry, you know, Tzadok of Cheshbin, it doesn't seem to be correct. That's you know, no one else does it. It's not, it's, you know, we have other, other things that we can improve. But the Chazanish's words is the Ramah was Mekel, not Mekel, Paskin, Lechatchil Ezmut. Okay, the Gro, the Rav, if, and that Madrega. But if it's Mokim Shechav Lacherem, this is not the Chumrah to begin with. So Lemaise, that's why we'll talk to Nashim, do wear jewelry. But I want to make a point. Someone asked me, his wife wants to be Machmer. He wasn't asked me, should she? But my but she feels funny. She go out, come to shul now, jewelry. You know, maybe he's like you, Merzik, you are, uh, or maybe uh, he's afraid that uh, you know it's just like it's uh, depressing. You know, it's Shabbos, it's Tishba. I said, one have an eight to have a good eight of you. Today, there's a big market for called costume jewelry, which means it's not real. So you think about it, costume jewelry would be mutti even like the machmirim, because you're not going to show off the fake jewelry and then say, oh, this is worth nothing, and you get embarrassed. <laughs> so I talk a found. The Cyrus Tshuva, the Enigel Chsam Seifa, has a Tshuva. Someone asked him about this costume jewelry, and he basically said, that should be muta l'chaladeis, you're not going to show off. You know, when it was also to wear costume jewelry would be marasayim, because no one knows what it is. But today everybody else is wearing it, so they'll think you want everybody else. So that might be an eta if it's negeya. But you know what's more important, more pressing for us? Okay, we know what's Allah about Nashim. What's the luck about jewelry for men? Let's say uh, Le Marshall, a person wants to wear a, a chassan watch. And it's a very expensive watch, he wants to wear it on Shabbos. Now, he wouldn't wear a regular watch on Shabbos, but chassan zeg, maybe it's tachshit. What's the luck about men wearing tachshitim on Shabbos? Now again, there used to be a time men wore rings. I just had a shayla, balchuva. Erlach balchuva, he asked the rub. I would like to continue wearing my, my wedding ring. If you tell me it's also, I'll take it off. But if it's just a question of hither, I'd rather continue wearing it. How do you answer that question? So the Maisa, we could say, maybe we feel that you know, we're not into the Baharoi Say syndrome. We don't show things off. Okay? It seems like people are into showing off, but okay. But the question is, is there an Issa Tachshitin for men? The Mahab is lost, and the Gemara is talking about women. So this is really a Bavli and Yushalmi, but I say I have a big agenda still. The Torah in Shin Aleph, and that's the way the Machaba says it, in Shin Aleph Sif Tes, quotes the Machloikis Rishonim, that some say men also included in the Issa of jewelry, but Rabbeinu Tam holds its mutter, because there's no Issa Tachshitin by men. But then the Torah adds, that's a Tachshit that's Meyuchid for a man. The Chazal didn't ask uh, Tachshitin for men, if only a man wears this particular type of Tachshit. But Dovah show Tachshit le'ish u le'isha. Let's say there's a Tachshit that both wear. Let's say in those days bo both wore rings. All agree is also for a man to wear a ring. Why? Light plug. Because we can't make exceptions. Uh, this is mutter, women, men, also men, mutter. So Shachan Aruch and Shin Aleph test says that if it's a Tachshit that Miochit for both, all agree is us. A Tachshit that's only for a man is a Machloikis Rishayinim. Okay. Now, so that, that means the Chayra, that a man, there is a reason he shouldn't wear a ring. But wait a second. This doesn't make sense. Now let's, let's make a Cheshman here. We don't wear a ring only like plug for women. But today women wear a ring, wear, wear Tachshit Blachatchil as we said. So we are still also when they're mutter and we're only also because of them? So here, this is the beautiful point here. The, the, when the Shulchan Aruch paskins about men wearing tachshitim, he sends you ayin, simen shin, gimel, sif yot ches. So what's there? Beautiful. There it says that the minik today is women do wear jewelry. So now, if women wear jewelry and men is only also out like plug, so, Yaisha. So, therefore, Zakhtar Dharma is implying that today, if women wear jewelry, men wear jewelry as well. 
Baruch Hashem, it's very logical. So even if you hold there is an Ishtach Shitim for men, which is Machloi Kiz Bishoyinim, if women wear it, we could wear it. But there's one last point, and that's Tab Kiva Ega, on the page, Shin Gimel Yud Ches, and he makes a very simple Cheshbin. Lemaisa, if a woman would listen to you, we would tell them, don't wear jewelry, but they're not going to listen to us. Zok Tab Kiva Ega, a Baal Nefesh that will listen to you, tell them, don't wear jewelry. Because Dubai women is only muta because uh, they're not going to listen. So then it became muta. So Kivayegis Lashen is Baal Nefesh Yochesh La'atzmai Shloi Lotzeis B'Tabas Klau. The Mishtabura and Sharetzi and Sivkat Lam Gimel, this is Shin Al of Sivkat Lam Gimel, says that the Rama has the same attitude. A ring for a man is muta, but it's Kedari Bimachma. So here we have an interesting thing that basically jewelry for men is muta, just like for women. We have a Bekiva Egez Baal Nefesh Yachmir that men should not wear jewelry. Now, how to apply that? So that's, now I hope we'll understand why I gave you this Akdama, because now hopefully everything else should be simple. Lamaisa, the Paiskim do say that something that's jewelry only for men, don't forget, let's talk about uh, a cufflink. Women don't wear cufflinks. So the Archa Shabbos in Perik Chavches HaOrashin, he brings up Kivega and he says, but a jewelry that was only used by men, that's Mutta Ibn Bal Nefesh. Why? And it's very Cheshmedic. Because the, the, when the Kivega say not to wear jewelry, if it was also for women and men alike. But if this was never also for women, they didn't wear, they didn't wear this type of jewelry, Tachshitim that are specifically made for men, Zok to Archa Shabbos, is okay, even for Baal Nefesh. Oh. Now we could breathe a sigh of relief. Someone asked me, why is, why is many men wear cufflinks? What about Baal Nefesh Yachmir? So I told him there are state shuvas with Dabba. First of all, cufflinks are tzarech malbush. It's not so necessarily a tachshus. Varaya, many people wear cheap, cheap cufflinks. Their main thing is to keep the shirts closed. Then there's no suffix. But even if you go that it's expensive, Cufflinks, and you bring out the tachshit, it's still a tachshit and yuchit for men. That's why a tie, tie pin, if you have a very nice fancy one, and you're calling it a tachshit, if you call it a tachshit, that is, if you call it a tie a malbush, then it's a tachshit, then you can still say it's mut, because women don't wear ties and don't wear tie clips. The question about a man wearing a ring is a sensitive question, and we have to take it with sensitivity. So the embassy's halacha says, it's muta to wear a ring, even today. You want to tell this person, Baal Nefesh Yachmer? You could say that. But to say it's also for a man to wear a ring is, is not hal api halacha. Because we paskin today, it's muta to wear jewelry. If women do it, men do it. Now, I did see the Chuvas Men HaShemayim, and the Makar Chaim, the Chavas Yor, and Sif Kotten Tess quotes this. They asked about wearing a ring, so he said, Alasige ba yod, hakol kol yakar daimidei esav. So that's why men typically don't wear rings. But if someone asked me, asked, would ask me, I want halacha lemaisa, I would say bal nefesh yachmem yikadin is muta. A chosin, expensive chosin zega, expensive watch. Again, talk for those that will not wear a cheap watch on Shabbos. Can you walk out with a expensive watch and call it a tachshit? So in the best scenario, we have a bal nefesh yachmem bekiveiga. Don't forget, because watches are worn by women, like by men. Now, the question is, is it really a tachshit? Because the Bialoch in Shin Aleph Yud Aleph, in the famous discussion about watches, he says, what does it differentiate a tachshit versus a non tachshit? He says, if you would wear the watch even when it stops. So if you wear it when it stops, obviously you're not carrying it out to have the time, you're wearing it because it looks nice. So the question is, would you wear the chas and zeige even if it stopped? Now, when you go to Yeshver, you better wear that watch even if it did stop. Otherwise, you should have fixed it. You know, he won't, why are you not wearing it? But let's say, stop, would you wear it out because it's nice? So the Orchus Rabbeinu and Amr Kufal Ahmed Zayin, the Chazanish's niece, asked him, can she wear a fancy watch? He said, if we invite you don't wear it when it stopped, it is not a tachshit. And the Chutzani and Dalit Kufchaf also, the ikra of the shon is not, is not a tachshit, it's a purpose of telling you the time. And the Rav Sternbuch and the Tshuva Hei Kuvdal also says this. 
So that's why it's hard to believe that a, tach, that, that a watch would be a, a heta gomer of a tachshit, especially if you don't wear it when it has stopped. Now, Rav Moshe has his famous chedesh and chedek aleph, kuf yud aleph, that even a cheap watch is mutter, because he calls it a malbush. And this we discussed a number of months ago, that's his novel chedesh, that it's a malbush, but most poets can feel it's not a malbush. But I should mention, just for the record, the Rabbi Yisrael Yanka Fish and Evan Yisrael in, in Umbed Ayin Ches and Chelik Tes, it's a very long tshuva, but Umbed Ayin Ches and the Shmir Shabbos and Siv Chav Zayin, both are of the opinion that a, that a real expensive watch can be worn on Shabbos because it's a tachshit. So maybe they had watches that they would wear even when it's broken. But again, even after you determine that it's a tachshit, you still have a Bekiva Egiz, Baal Nefesh Yachmir, so a Baal Nefesh Yachmir. Now, if a person Friday goes into Shabbos, like we're going to have Shavuos soon, and typically he wears his gold watch on Yom Tiv, but not Shabbos, he forgot to take it off. He's walking Friday night with his gold watch. So then you could say, you could rely on the sheet that it's a tachshit, don't drop it onto the street. You could rely on a moich that maybe a watch of a chalmutah, but certainly on a gold watch and get home, and then there you could take it off. The Bialocha discusses, Mishbur and Bialocha discuss a pocket watch, which was very common in those days. And a pocket watch, he says, is a tachshit, but it's not a, you're not wearing it. So that would be a masui. Now, a question that come, came up recently, and I remember when I was a bacha, it came up, you know, then, because that's what styles are. Into style, out of style, goes back and forth. You know, if you have your grandfather's suit, it's mamish the perfect style for today. The small hats, the small, uh, you know, so they make a chayzik out of us, but okay. That, that's for different schmooze. So it came up to Shaila about when they started wearing, again, pins and feathers and hats. So the maisa, it is a tachshit. You know, I remember the Abbasin Rav, this goes back maybe 40 years ago, maybe more. He says that he quoted his father that says, Efsha, Efsha, the, the, the feathers are tachshit, the mention is can tachshit. <laughs> okay, some people do wear feathers, they are tachshitim, but I'm not getting into that part of it. But it's the same Shaila. So the Shmir Shabbos, Yud Ches Chafei, and the Ber Moishetak Gimel Samachtes, say, Lemais is a tachshit, and you can't ask it. Now, it's not going to fly away, you know, Chashash is going to take it, you know, going to carry it, it doesn't have to be attached. The, the question is, Rabbi Kiva Egez, Baal Nefesh, does it apply to a feather or a pin? And the answer is no. Because women don't wear hats. And it's a tachshit am yuchid le'ish. Now, a challenging question also resurfaced. I remember when it was in the style last, uh, last Gilgal, is to have a handkerchief, a, a decorative handkerchief, in the upper jacket pocket. So the truth is that that's definitely, you're not carrying it to blow your nose. You're not going to use it for that. Obviously, people have different, a whole different amount of them and they change with suits. And a, it's a very much of a tachshit um, type of um, beged. Is it not a malbush? And the Shmir Shabbos, Yud Ches, Chafei, Taka says, it's muta alts tachshit. And presumably, you don't have to attach it because a tachshit that's worn in its place. Now, and a chanami, the paiskim, the earlier paiskim was struggling to find a way to carry a handkerchief that you really needed because the shul didn't give tissues and you have to get it to shul. So all the eights they didn't like because it wasn't a malbush. The marshal put it under your shirt collar to absorb sweat, wrap it around your wrist, put it onto the belt. Those are all because it's nishti nishteher. It's not a malbush, not a tashit. But this, this handkerchief that's used as a tashit and that's where it belongs, the khar should be mut. But then I saw a very interesting argument, and tell me if you like it, but in the Rafael Sefer, it's page 59, in the Hilchus Rabs the Shabbos of Amid Reish Zayin, they point to a Magan Avram. The Magan Avram in Shin Aleph Chav Zayin is a big Yisoid. Magan Avram said, let's say you have a Tachshit Gomor, but you don't wear it, you carry it. I'll give you two examples. One example the Magan Avram discusses is a silver cane that a young man wears, but it's a sign of dignity. A dignitary goes with a cane. And it's Vadi Amalbush. He's not doing it because he can't walk. He's a young, uh, robust individual. Is that mutter to go out on Shabbos? And a more modern muscle would be women that have decorative handbags or pocketbooks that match the pocketbook with the dress. And they go to Chasana, nothing in it, but you have to have a, a, a handbag. So that's a Tachshit Gomor that you carry. Can you go out wear, carrying a Tachshit Gomor? So the Magan Avram says, and the Rabbi Lubush Yisrael explain that that might be mutter al tachshit, but that's, that you're not wearing it. And that's an Isidur Abanan, it looks like you're carrying it. So you see something that you're not wearing, you're carrying, even a tachshit is awesome. 
So these pies can feel that if you put the t- handkerchief in the pocket, that's the derech, the way to carry it. And that's also even if it's a tachshit. But the embassy is, the, the raya is not a raya. Because you're carrying a cane and you're carrying a handbag. Here you're wearing it in the place where it's worn. So the mice, it seems that there is a tzad to be makal, if, even if it's not attached, but even though the ramach hold, if it's attached, it's okay. Someone got me a little nervous, because I think he has nerve, and he says, I heard that tachshit is only muta if it's noticeable at all times. I said, what do you mean? Let's say a woman's wearing a watch, it's only mutter if she makes sure that the watch is be- below the sleeve, so you have to see it. And the chayru he's coming from is, if right now you don't see it, it's not functioning as a tachshit. But that can be, because women wear tachshitim at night in the street, and no one sees it. They wear coats over, and they wear jackets, or whatever it is, and, 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 and you know, this is going to be a real nervous issue. You have to, every moment has to be nikah. So he said, it's a, look, I should look it up, a teal of David, to see if cotton zayin, which I promptly did. And I found, as I often find, people misread things. Tila David discusses a pocket watch. Can a pocket watch be considered a tachshit? So he says, he makes the point, like, Mikri tachshit al mashe b'roi pama magula. Lefizeh, zega, this zega, it's not a tachshit. He's not saying it has to be nicker every moment of the day. He's saying, if it's typically worn in a way that you don't see it, it's not a tachshit. And you don't walk around with the, with the zega hanging hang from, your, from your hat. You put it in the pocket. But he's not saying a tachshit has to be nicker every moment of the day. I mean, that's the way it's worn. It's derech malbush, derech tachshit. But what's interesting, uh, when I looked into the sugi more, the magzol yo chelik beis, simen yud beis, and others say this as well. If, let's say, she's, an is going through a very dangerous neighborhood and wants to, you know, hide the tachshit, so to stick it under the dress and it's not seen at all, that would be a problem. Because there, yudafka, yudafka want it not to be a, a, a tachshit, that I understand. But if you're wearing a watch, you're wearing a tachshit, and it's not noticeable at that moment, that's not a reason to say that it's awesome. It's just, it's, it's illogical. A boche asked me about wearing glasses. So as we know, glasses is basically not a problem today because the glasses have a, a good fit, they don't fall off. But he says basically, he wears, it's really, for him, it's reading glasses. But he got used to them wearing it a whole day. And he likes the way he looks. Can you call glasses a tachshit? So the truth is, people that wear glasses are complaining, it's so difficult. But let's assume he's right. So here the point is that glass that you might take off because it's, it's irritating you, is a chashash, you might come to carry it. So the police can make the chilek that if it's reading glass that you don't need when you go on the street, you might take it off. But glass that, re- seeing glasses, about this mut. But his hetta was not only because he calls it a tachshit. He told me, lemais, it helps him in seeing. It's like he's like in between. So if he wears it the whole week, it doesn't take it off, avada and avada, that would be a tzad to be mekel. That's mamish, what, you know, what, the, what the glass are there for. And one last point, I think, is a mitzvah lefarsim, the Gemara, famous Gemara, that a person is chayiv to check his pockets before he goes out on Erev Shabbos. The Gemara, and this is a kipaskin, the Shulchan Aruch and Reishon and Beis. The Gemara adds, Hilcha, the one that Talmud them heard, is that Hilcha Sarab Sila Shabbos. Now that sounds strange. Imagine you go to a Shia and the Rav says, Allah uh, Lamaisa goes, Rav, good gazak, you know, thumbs up in English. You have to tell the Rebbe it's a good psak. So I once saw a pshat, I couldn't find it now, but one of the Kadmainim say this pshat, he wasn't agreeing to the Rebbe. He was saying, a Mardik Allah Lamaisa. Mad Erev Shabbos, when it's not yet Shkia, you have to check your pockets because you might carry it on Shabbos. How about on Shabbos Gufa? When you put something in your pocket in Shabbos, Home. How much more? You have to check your pockets before you go out. And Takadim is on the end of Rashton Bays on this Machab checking Erev Shabbos. He says, and Kolshkein on Shabbos. If before you go out, check your pockets. Now there was a minig of the Groh, my Srab and the Rav, and Allah and Shulchan Aruch, that for that reason not to put anything in your pocket on Shabbos. Shabbos. So the minig is to be makel, but at least on Shabbos, be careful, especially the summer's coming. We're in the mountains. Check your pockets. I couldn't talk to you. That's possible. That's possible. I'm ashamed. I'd like to give a big yeshua to Smith for today's share. Also, like to read item, there was a appeal and shul for the Moisad HaKadosh Sharashim in Yishalayim. That's led by Moshe Peleg, who's worked many years with 
youth at risk, especially with girls at risk. And he has an organization and a seminary, special seminary for them, and helps put straighten them, get them on the straight path, and uh, marry them off. In addition, he has a, a whole program for boys at risk, for young men. They have a whole special pl uh, building and a uh, rooftop. Shalayim Els Mechazek them. Bring them back to Tyra and Yiddishkeit. Excuse me. And he's uh, here with us in the hall. He's sitting in the hallway outside with more information. And however, could help him Mechazek this Moisad help the boys and girls of Klal Yisrael return to the proper path. Be mitzvah gedolei yichoshev. We just said what we learned today the fact that a person's wearing something or you attached to him is not a heta and that there are many rayas. Wearing or attaching is not the heta. The only heta is either it's a malbush, a tachshit, a tzulei guf, or a tzarech beget. The main word of all these is the word bottle. It's like an accessory. Once it's bottle, it becomes part of the person. That's why you're allowed to wear an extra beget for someone else. If that's the derech, we have two begodim. I grad, I've got to mention two belts is also because we don't wear two belts. But you're allowed to wear a tachshit for someone else because it's functional for you. To wear a bandage for someone else, or an ish, wearing a tachshit of an isha, or vice versa, if it's not functional, it can't be done. A bite plate, or back brace, or anything that's really a tzari chaguf that people wear, which is necessary for the protect pain, would be bottle and is mutta. An insole in shoes, or paper and hat to make a better fit is bottle to the beged. A, a, a collar stiffener is considered part of the shirt and his mutter. Bobby pins and safety pins today, to my knowledge, and rubber bands are all considered enough of a tzorich that it's bottled to the person. The, the question of a person, of the, uh, the rubber band in, in the beard, even though the earlier parties were more skeptical, but today it has become the derech, and that's probably why it's mutter. A tie and a tie pin are mutter. The question is, is it tachshit or malbish? The Shabbos key, the Shabbos belt is a sugya gedoyla, but basically the question is, if there's a tzorech, besides it's being a tachshit, is that moto or not? A catheter that people need, there is a head to go out on Shabbos, could I clean it, to empty it before you go out, because that part that what's in, in the bag itself is definitely not needed. Today's noshim are makele to wear jewelry, and kivega as a chiddish, men wearing jewelry that's that's miyuchet for men and women, bal nefesh yachma, even b'kiveges moidem, that for men, jewelry is also mutter. Custom jewelry is mutter for anybody, you're not going to show it off. A man to wear a ring, we'll tell him bal nefesh yachma, but it's mutter. A chosen zeger, it's best not to, unless you're very much certain that it's a tachshin. Even then, b'kiveges bal nefesh yachma should apply. A tie pin and cufflinks, feather and a hat, pin and a hat are all mutter. And it's not even for a bal nefesh because that's a tachshit of a man. Handkerchief in a the pocket, there's enough to be makele as it is. Some people attach it. But to carry a tachshit, a, a dignitary carrying his cane, or a woman carrying the handbag is a problem. If lemaisa, the, we check our pockets on Arab Shabbos, certainly on Shabbos to make sure that there's no carry. Yes, thank you for waiting.